First reading tonight is taken from the book of Dan, chapter 7. I saw in the night visions, and behold, with the clouds of heaven there came one like a son of man. And he came to the Ancient of Days and was presented before him, and to him who was given dominion and glory and a kingdom, that all peoples, nations, and languages should serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion, which shall not pass away, in his kingdom one that shall not be destroyed. The Lord have mercy on us. Thanks be to God. The second reading is from 1 Corinthians chapter 1. For since in the wisdom of God, the world did not know God through wisdom, it pleased God through the folly of what we preach to save those who believe. For Jews demand signs and Greeks seek wisdom, but we preach Christ crucified, a stumbling block to Jews and folly to Gentiles. But to those who are called, both Jews and, Greek, and Greeks, Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God. For the foolishness of God is wiser than men, and the weakness of God is stronger than men. Thanks. O oh Lord, have mercy on us. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. We rise for the reading of the gospel. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us. And we've seen his glory. Glory as the only son from the father, full of grace and truth. The Lord have mercy on us. Please be seated. The wisdom of God. In the scriptures, we find different descriptions that equate to Jesus Christ, the wisdom of God, the word of God, the son of God, the only begotten son of God, the monogenos, as is the Greek puts points forth. It has become normal for translations to have the only son from the from the God, Father. And they follow it with the full of grace and truth. Now that's an English translation. The Greek says the only begotten, the monogenos. And that was a big deal. The church for about 400 years fought different theologians and the like fought over the person of Christ. What's he, was his nature one? Were there two? Was there a, a human and, a, and God? And did that personality of the human get submerged and uh, lost? And only Christ's person as God show forth? And that struggle uh, in Christendom was really brought on initially by the Gnostics, but also in trying to understand for the Jew that Jesus was God. And so as we look at our Savior today and his coming as a baby, as he came, we see two, I think, wonderful things. One, his great love for us, that he would submit himself in that manner. And two, what a gracious and awe-inspiring God we have. And so I've picked a few uh, scriptural verses to point out that Jesus is the wisdom of God. In 1 Corinthians 8, 6, 
It says, yet for us, there is one God, the Father, from whom all things and for whom we exist. And one Lord Jesus Christ, through whom all things and through whom we exist. Or we find in Colossians, St. Paul writes again, he is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. For by him, all things were created in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities. All things were created through him and for him. And he is before all things. And in him, all things hold together. And he is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead. That is everything he might, that in everything he might be preeminent. For in him, all the fullness of the God was pleased to dwell. And through him, to reconcile to himself all things, whether on earth or in heaven, making peace by the blood of his cross. The scandal of the cross probably being the hardest thing to understand. Long ago, as it says in Hebrews, at many times and in many ways, God spoke to our fathers by the prophets. But in these last days, he has spoken to us by his son, whom he appointed the heir of all things, through whom also he created the world. He is the radiance of the glory of God and the exact imprint of his nature. And he upholds the universe by the word of his power. After making purification for sin, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high, having become as much superior to angels as the name he has inherited is more excellent than theirs. For to which of the angels did God ever say, you are my son? Today I have begotten you. Or again, I will be to him a father, and he shall be to me a son. And again, when he brings the firstborn into the world, he says that all God's angels worship him. In Revelation 3.14, we read, And the angels of the church in Laodicea write, The word of the Amen the faithful and the true witness, the beginning of God's creation. It goes on for there, describing who is giving the command. John 3, 16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. We go to Proverbs. And we read in chapter 3, verse 19, the Lord, by wisdom, founded the earth. By understanding, he established the heavens. Or in Proverbs 8, 22 to 30, the Lord possessed me at the beginning of his work, the first of his acts of old. Ages ago, I was set up at the first, before the beginning of the earth. When there was no depths, I was brought forth. When there was no springs abounding with water. Before the mountains had been shaped, I was brought forth. Before he made the earth with its fields, or the first of the dust of the world. When he established the heavens, I was there. When he drew a circle on the face of the deep, when he made firm the skies above, and when he established the fountains of the deep, when he assigned to the sea its limit, so that the water might not transgress his command, when he marked out the foundation of the earth, then I was beside him like a master worker, and I was daily his delight. Rejoicing before him, always rejoicing in his inhabited world and delighting in the children 
of man. Now, those are a few of the direct quotes that show how Jesus, the only begotten Son, the wisdom of God, the Word of God, the Son of God, the message and the messenger came in a way that no one would have thought. Man's idea of God is power and strength and all. But Jesus came so that even the lowliest of mankind could come to him. He redeemed, paid for all. And so when we look in the, the, the manger and see the babe of Bethlehem in our mind or in the, what is presented as, as a, a child, a doll, or as a child taking the place of Christ in the Christmas play, we reminded that that's exactly what Jesus was. How God emptied himself and made himself completely vulnerable to mankind so that he could save us. He did that for you, and he did that for me. And so as Christmas comes and we celebrate the, the fact that he did come, let us not forget that he promises to come again and to take us to be with him. And so when you make the sign of the cross, reminding you of your baptism, reminding you that you belong to Christ, that you are his, remember that this awe-inspiring God has gone to the depths and to the heights for you and me. Amen. The peace of God, the path of all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in true faith until life everlasting. Let us depart in his peace. Amen.
be seated for the offering. taken tonight which is an offering in God's kingdom to support his church and do the ministry you are solicited to be part of that to become part with God in his work 